Okay, well, my watch says it's two o'clock. There's the cuckoo clock saying it's two o'clock. So let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm excited to have you here today. Um, I am using today <clears throat> products from a, a sneak peek um, or pre-order that you can do in November, starting November 2nd with products that are, some of them are going to be in the January through July mini catalog. Um, some of the, some of the papers and things are only, ex are exclusive to November, but it's called Eden's Garden. It has a beautiful stamp set, which is distinctive, I believe. Um, and it's a clean stamp set. It has several greetings and some flowers uh, things to do it and the reason I say it's distinctive is because there's the cross hatches it doesn't actually say distinctive but there are cross hatches in it so that you only have to stamp once and have the image have depth to it so that's the stamp set These are the dies, and I was hoping that this die would fit on top of this one. Duh, I should know it doesn't, because it sits inside of it, but it makes this lovely berry type cutout. And then I was very surprised. This is the label. And I normally stamp first and then die cut, but it's solid through here, so there's no way that you can see your stamped image. So you do have to cut this one first and then stamp on it and hope that you're accurate on getting it stamped. So that's the die set. The designer series papers come with the collection that can be ordered in um, November are have a gold foil on them. Can you see the shine there? So one side has gold foil, and the other side has a fairly neutral pattern to it. And these are in the soft succulent and um, evening evergreen colors. At any rate, really pretty, very pretty. And then also in it, collection, are some cotton papers. with the evening evergreen and they're they're really soft and there's a bit of a texture and can you see there's a, a a subtle print on it yeah that shows up really well so that's the evening evergreen and then the soft succulent ones were like this I think the pattern in it is the same as the evergreen. So that's part of the collection. And then another part of the collection is some gems. Front and center gems. So it's kind of got a blue um, shape one and then one that has reds in it. Really very pretty. And that is, that's all of the collection. It will sell for $82 US for the whole set. And I suspect 
that the dies and the stamp set are what will be in the new catalog. Yeah, they're going. The bundle is in the January catalog. Now let me show you what I have done with these. I took the large die, cut. I cut it out of white because I wanted to have the berries red. So I cut it out with uh, basic white, and then I colored it with um, pale uh, mossy metal and uh, real red um, alcohol markers. And this is a layer of the red velvet. I, if I make more of these, I'm not gonna use the red velvet because that not enough shows for you to really know that it is velvet. And then I use some of the red, uh, red crystal gems. So that was a Christmas one. Oh, and the greeting comes from um, the not the Christmas to remember, but the merriest Christmas, merriest moments stamp set. Okay, this, so that was one I made. This one I made because I wanted to show all of the beautiful designer series papers. And this shows you those gems really well. And this is the gold um, glimmer paper, I believe it's called, that is in the annual catalog. You can get the gold and then uh, pink. And it's a six by six piece um, thing. You get three sheets of each. So there's that one. And this is the one we're going to make today. If we have time, we'll make this one too because I have the parts to do it. So this is the trifold one and it has a belly band. And it opens up like that to say, sending you hugs, sending hugs. So let's get started on that. You start with a piece of, um, this is soft succulent, and it's 11 by five and a half, and you trim, you score it at three and three eighths on each end. Then, to get the angle, you can measure down from the top edge over here, we can measure down one and a half inches, or, you can use your scoreboard, I mean your trimmer, and you put the fold there, and then you move, let me sh show you on this one. So you put the fold, no, that's not gonna work it. You put the fold on the groove, and then you move this corner that would be right here, clear over to the one and a half inch mark, and so, so this would have gone clear over to here, to the corner, and then you trim it. And then to get the other one, you put the point you just made and you line it up with the edge coming down here to the one inch. Let me get a piece of, just a piece of cardstock, I'll show you. Okay, this up here. Okay, this is this will show you better. So to get that um, cut, let's say that this is the um, the score line. I would put the corner there, the score line, and this is my top edge, and I would slide it over. to the one and a half, you see? Over to the one and a half, and then I, then you cut. They're gonna make a very strange shape, I assure you. Then this is the point that I had just cut. That represents this point here. And you line it up on the groove 
and you line your other corner, the bottom corner, on the one inch. You see? And then you cut again, and that's what gives you this fold. Now, tricky is, when you do the other side, you have to turn it over. And you do the same thing. So you line up the score line, and you line up the top corner at one and a half, and then you trim, and then you do the point you just made, and this comes down this way to the one inch, and you score again. Let me show you what happens if you do not turn it over. So I did the first one, got it nice and beautiful, then I turned it this way. No, then I went to the other end. Did the same thing. But lo and behold, I had them upside down. So you have to be careful which that you're using the same edge each time. So that's that part of it. Now we want to decorate these fronts. And you start with a piece, this is three and a quarter by four, by four and three quarter inch. And you place it on your card front, lining it up like so that the edge here and the edge here so that it's even and as much out here. So if I want to have this much of an edge, a border, I have to double that. And then you trace your pattern. And when I did that, I ended up with this. And it did a pretty good job of getting the, the angle right. So once I got that, and I've checked it with this on the reverse side to see if it looks about right on this side, and it looks good that way too. So I'm going to take this piece, I'm gonna put the right sides together. Actually, I'm going to put the wrong sides together because I want my drawing to be, my lines to be on the back side. Then I'm going to trace with a pencil. Like that. And you can either paper cut, you can either cut it with your paper snips or I'm going to use the trimmer again. So the line goes from the corner here and actually, I'm going to line these up together. So it runs like that. Yep because it was hard to see the line. Cut. And then you're going to put the corner there. Let me put this back together again. So put that corner and line it up with the bottom. Come on. Boy, I can't hardly see that line. Do that again. There we 
there's the mark. Okay, so that corner and the mark, which is there. And you can save these little triangles if you were really frugal with your designer series paper. And if I did this right, hopefully I did, yes. So that fits on there. Put that on with some stamp and seal. Well, it wasn't as accurate as I thought it was, but it will do. I understand that Norwegian knitters deliberately put a mistake into their sweaters because they would not presume to be perfect. So I'm going to go with that. Rub off the adhesive. And then on the inside, I have a piece of four by five and a quarter of another one of the patterns. And I've already stamped the greeting. I had some troubles with this because the edges are darker than the rest of it. And I think what I needed to do, um, I have been told that if you take the surface of the ink pad and run a credit card across it and distribute the ink out better, that um, you'll get a more even stamp. And that's what I should have done. Um, but I was in a hurry. And then I cut this out with one of the um, contour Scalloped contour dies, one of my favorite sets of dies. Uh, this was working so well until just now. And I stamped the greeting. This was in soft uh, succulent, and this is in the evening evergreen that down there like that and then for closing it I'm going to use a belly band and it, you've got some leftover long leftover from the cutting the card base so you just take the, uh, an inch wide strip of that Wrap it around. Like that. And then I'm going to trim the edges because I don't want... Depending on the size of your embellishment on the front, it doesn't matter how much they overlap. But I want to be able to hide them. So I'm going to tr trim off the excess. And I want to hold it good and firm. So I'm going to put a piece of tape 
tear tape on it. Better get my pick. Take your take your pick tool to get that up. There we go. Okay, so there's that part. And then I was going to use this label, but it's not wide enough to cover all of that. Oh, before I do that, I want to put on some ribbon. This beautiful gold glimmer shimmer ribbon. I'm gonna wrap it around. And I'm gonna anchor it down also with some tear and tape. Could use a glue dot, but I have this handy. holding well. Like that. And to cover up this area, I could took a piece of gold foil and I cut out this die. But this die takes up much of the distance and you don't see too much of the ribbon. And it uh, is pretty much bigger, almost as big as the other. So I cut one end, and then I'm going to do a little bit of magic to shorten it. I'm going to put it down just where, and you can feel when you've got it in the groove, it doesn't slide around. That feels like it's right. Hold it down with some painter's tape or washi tape. Like that. And then I'm also going to just go as far as here when I roll it through. I'm not going to roll it all the way through. My beautiful little mini... run it just part way through and then back out and hopefully that was enough yep perfect huh got a little bit
bit of a embossed thing there. So I'm going to put my label on top of this. Stamped it with saying hello there. And I'll use some Stampin' Dimensionals to put it on. This will cover up all of the center part. Oh, that's not straight. Now that I straightened up the belly band. Oh well. But need to have a little bit of bling. Make it really fancy. So I'm going to put a couple of these gems on. And they could go up or down either way. Either way, but not but not crooked. So there's your completed card. This belly band's a little bit looser than I would like because it'll fall off, but it makes it easy for the person. So if you open it up, and there you have sending hugs. So you have a pretty, it's not really that hard. It's just getting those cuts right and the layering of the designer series paper. But it makes a very special card. See? Okay, so let's see. We'll go on with the other card. Um, this one, because everything is all cut. And it's just a matter of putting it together. So I have a card base of Evening Evergreen. It's the standard... Eight and a half by five and a quarter, five and a half. Folded in half and burnished. This is a piece of that gold. It's called Rose gold and rose gold six by six metallic specialty paper. And it it seems to me it has, depending on how the light shines on it, it's really bright and shiny, and other times it's uh, very subdued. This piece is five and a quarter by four. And then I punched out these using the um, tailored tag punch. Oop, I should not have taken that off. Should not have put this down yet. 
because I need to trim a couple of the pieces. Let me get my craft sheet. This is not a Stampin' Up! one, but it works just as fine. And that will keep the adhesive from sticking to my work surface. Okay, so I'm just going to start in the middle with this one and just put some Stampin' Seal on it. You could use multi-purpose liquid glue. Or if you're really into glue dots, you could put them in. This one on and leave a little bit of space. Oh no, that is not what I meant to do because that is exactly the same pattern. Okay, we'll go with the flow. I'll put this one over here. Try to line it up straight as straight as you can. And then this one goes over here. Like that. And put this one down at the bottom. Again, leaving a little bit of a gap. And I'm going to have to punch another piece. Because I put the sticky on the wrong side. Now let's get this on the right side. You can play around with these patterns and, and play with the way that you like the combinations and which sides for which. It's really a great way, this pat this is a great way to demonstrate the different side different sides of your designer series paper.
Okay, and then you trim off the excess along the sides. I'm ready to put it on the card. And I have another one of those. Hello there. Tags already made up. it across and now the fun part putting on all the all the gems good thing they included a lot of them because I'm going to be using a lot so this time I'm going to put one on each end of the label vertically and then put one in each one in the center here horizontally And there you have it. I would finish off this card with a piece of white cardstock on the inside and either stamp a greeting or I would, um, one of the greetings from this set, which would be really nice, it says hello there. And then on the inside I might say, my heart is tied to yours, tug if you need anything. And then stamp maybe a couple of these things around the outside. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. This is Sue the Soggy Stamper. If you have any questions, be sure to email me, sue at soggystamper.com. My blog is www.soggystamper.com. If you need any of the supplies I have used, I'd love to have be your demonstrator. Um, and my store is creationsbysue.stampinup.net. This video will be up on my YouTube channel, The Soggy Stamper. And I encourage you to go check me out on TikTok. I have been doing TikToks, and it's a lot of fun. Um, just kind of little short tips and stuff like that, and um, showing some of my cards, and, and occasionally doing showing how to make some cards. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and we'll see you again next week, probably Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Have a wonderful weekend and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.